Hey everyone, it's Rena Jadav and Dr. Joel Kahn, and today we are going to be doing a live call with question and answers. Dr. Joel, you enjoying your beautiful meal in your lovely restaurant? It's 90 degrees here in Detroit, so I'm inside for a minute. I'm running outside, get some vitamin D after this. Love it, love it. All right, so we have a question here from someone who is 58 years old. She's five foot six, 217 pounds. She says she hasn't always been like this. However, last summer she was diagnosed with fib flutter, which is sustained. Oh, and she has had her gallbladder removed. So here's her set of questions. She's been breathless, heart pounding upon exertion. She gets sweaty. She has fainting spells. She has a fuzzy feeling in her head, intermittent ringing in her ears. Um, heat makes her feel a lot worse. And she can't exercise, and she, know, she knows it makes it worse. She also has edema in her legs, ankles, and feet. Um, red purple area on her lower right calf. And she thinks she has insufficient blood flow as well. So, so the first question is, what is the diet that she can use to reverse and get her health back? So I am a little cautious about giving direct patient advice by yes. media that aren't standard. So yes. I am going to talk in generalities. And if this woman wants to reach me at my office, we will have a personal conversation with her labs and her testing. Perfect. So in general, I mean, in general, you do describe a relatively common scenario. Obesity, I don't know if there's high blood pressure. I bet there is, probably high blood sugar. Uh, and also He's a sugar addict, yes, probably. Cardiac problems, in this case, an irregular heartbeat that affects millions of people, called fibrillation, that unfortunately puts people at significant risk of premature stroke. So it is a somewhat concerning rhythm. Uh, the likelihood in my 30 years of experience is her um, weight is an issue because with obesity comes sleep apnea. With sleep apnea, comes low oxygen, stress in the brain and heart, and atrial fibrillation develops in people with sleep apnea, develops in people with high blood pressure. The root cause is obesity and food. We call it fibrillation, we call it hypertension. Uh, we should call it uh, you know, diets that promote obesity. And now we know it's more than diet, although diet is crucial, processed food, animal-rich foods, oils, sugars, and even salt. But we know that our environment is critical, in, the, in Barcelona this week, in Spain, there was a very prominent medical meeting. They actually got headlines all over the world, take your shoes off when you walk in the house. Yeah. And that prompted uh, a presentation there that these are academic doctors, not bloggers, that our exposure to chemicals is driving obesity, plus food, plus inactivity. But things you put on your skin, things you put under your arm, things you're brushing your teeth with, things you're shampooing with, things you're cleaning the kitchen, the garage with, uh, are in your skin in 25 seconds. They're disrupting your hormonal system. Uh, the hor the uh, called bio uh, accumulants and pollutants are in your fat stores. Um, and even walking from your lawn, which has been freshly fertilized or sprayed with uh, Roundup to your house, you've now got chemicals all over your house, which was the idea about taking your shoes off. Then you get to sleep. A lot of people overweight, we've mentioned sleep apnea, they also just don't sleep well, their back hurts, poor sleep, uh, high blood pressure, all trigger atrial fibrillation. So I mean, anybody should eat a diet that's con constituted of whole food, plant-based. Uh, to lose weight, I would recommend two meals a day. I would recommend breakfast and lunch with a small snack in the middle of the day. I would eat within a 12 hour time frame, or maybe uh, 10 hour time frame and leave yourself 12 to 14 hours every day you don't eat. Seven o'clock meal, you don't eat till nine in the morning. You don't need to do 18 hours. Uh, you know, what about eating. Fat? Dr. Joel, what about fat? Because one of the challenges is that there is some folks out there saying have a high fat diet and others saying have a low fat diet. For someone with this particular condition, what's your, your recommendation around fat? So if you, you know, the, the, the most correct answer would be a whole food plant-based diet that at least in California, they would call no SOS, soil, salt, oil, sugar. 
uh, True North in Santa Rosa teaches that. Chef AJ in LA and Santa Rosa teaches that. No salt, oil, sugar. So we're talking about large salads and beans and whole grains and fruits and vegetables with balsamic, with lemon juice, uh, no added sugar in the food, no added salt in the food, and no oils. Uh, oils are going to jack up your calories. You're gonna get adequate essential fats from flaxseed, chia seeds, hemp seeds, uh, occasional pumpkin, uh, pumpkin seeds, uh, walnuts. And you don't wanna eat too many of those either if you wanna lose weight. Um, two meals a day, cut back your calories. You don't need three meals a day, and God knows you don't need six meals a day. Now, the world's gone gaga right where you live, Silicon Valley area, for the ketogenic diet. Yes. Just relabel it. Take every book called The Atkins Diet and put a sticker and call it The Ketogenic Diet. How to force our body into a backup metabolic mechanism that's there when you're very sick, when you're in type 1 diabetic ketoacidosis, when you're having epilepsy as a child, um, and yet we're forcing this backup system into the body by reducing carbohydrates, jacking up the fat, eating a lot of animal products, creating ketone bodies, and doing that week after week after week after week after week. There are even now in your part of the country again, you can buy a bottle of ketone bodies and yeah. jack it up while you're having your ice cream. Ice cream, ketone bodies, this is great. It's a very dangerous, scientifically unsupported diet. Uh, traditionally in the past, there were times we were starving. We do have a backup mechanism when we're under stress from diabetes or starvation, but it never was to be turned on 30 days a month, six right. months, 12 months a year. Right. There are seven studies out there that say your risk of dying goes up when you do a low carb, high fat animal diet, which is currently what we call the ketogenic diet. Dying is a bad side effect <laughs> that doesn't clearly show benefit. Um, there are vegan versions, they're getting popular. Mm -hmm. um, there is a vegan version out of uh, UCLA and uh, more specifically University of Southern California called Prolon, yes. P-R-O-L-O-N. It's a commercially available five-day food program. And Dr. Longo believes if you're doing ketogenic, do it with plants, because you can, olives and nuts and leafy greens, and do it for five days, not for 30 days. Give your body a break. It never was meant to have all that stress. You can also find on Facebook a users group for vegan keto. You can find uh, starter kits on Google, vegan keto. The data is if you're gonna get your fat and protein, get it from plants, not animals, and you will greatly favor the chance that that'll be a healthy program. Still, other than Dr. Longo's Prolon, there's very little actual science about using the vegan keto. There is, it, it comes under another name, a professor in Toronto called it Eco Atkins, and he did research and it helped people lose weight and help people uh, control their cholesterol. But it was short term studies. But if somebody said to me, Doc, I'm doing the prolon, or I've researched and I'm doing a seven day plant based whole food, it's high in nuts and olives and uh, extra virgin olive oil, and I'm reducing my carbohydrates, I'll eat leafy greens and berries and nothing else but I'm doing it for seven days and then I'll stop. I say, okay, reasonable. You're not gonna probably hurt yourself. Okay. That's not what anybody's doing in Hollywood. Halle okay. Berry looks Halle Berry because she's doing it day after day after day after day. Okay. And it'll catch up with her. It will age her. What about herbs? Are there any herbs that you recommend for someone with, the, with her condition that can help her? Yeah, I mean, there are supplements. That's not herbs. Uh, magnesium helps. Okay. That is available in health food stores. Uh, herbs, you want to cut down inflammation. So ginger, turmeric, rosemary, oregano are the big anti-inflammatory herbs. Okay. And then okay. you got to move your body. Even if you walk, even if you climb stairs, even if you get in a warm pool and do some water aerobics, move your body. What about CoQ10? Uh, it's, you know, nobody in my clinic gets out without a bottle of CoQ10. Okay. Um, it's oh. the official band leader of CoQ10. Okay. It won't get rid of the condition. It's not going to cause weight loss. It might help blood pressure and some of the shortness of breath. And what about L-carnitine? It's a mixed bag. I was trained to use L-carnitine, a vitamin. It might support healthy heart metabolism and strength, but it's now known 
that red meat can cause your body to create a chemical that's bad for you called TMAO. And you can get a blood test, and I do it in my patients. And if they're elevated, there's data if you're a diabetic or a heart patient or a heart failure patient or an atrial fibrillation patient. Mm. Your risk of dying goes up if you happen to have a high TMAO. Well, eating egg yolks, eating red meat, and taking carnitine can drive your TMAO level up. And doctors that are prescribing carnitine vitamins aren't checking TMAO levels. So I do. And if my patient, mm. it's based on your gut. Some people bump their TMAO up, some don't. So that's my own protocol. If I'm going to use carnitine, I feel obligated to check them and uh, ensure I didn't just potentially increase their risk. Is there an electrocardiologist that you can recommend in Kansas City or Tulsa? Yeah. Lee, I think it's Lee, but Steinman, David Steinman. S-T-E-I-N-M-A-N at Mid-America Heart Institute, part of the uh, St. Luke system. Is, another question is, does sugar cause cardiac issues? I hope not. I'm eating some. <laughs> for a moment of indiscretion. Um, sugar, you know, sugar is another term like protein. It, there's a, a difficult to define because there's sucrose and glucose and lactose and fructose and mannose and ribose. And you may not know this, but, you know, in the food industry, there's 57 names used for sugar, largely to hide the word sugar, like high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup. Um, dextromultrin, rice syrup, brown rice syrup, very confusing. Mm -hmm. And there is, uh, you know, an effort to get food labeled for how much added sugar, because a fruit has sugar, but God knows, don't quit fruit. But what about a fruit loop? I mean, fruit loop, they have to dump white sugar in to produce right. it. Um, studies that go back a long time showed a relationship. People eating more sugar had more heart disease. It was nowhere near as powerful as the relationship people eating the most saturated fat, chicken, eggs, and cheese, had way more heart disease. But it mattered. It just didn't matter nearly as much. So the message came out from the American Heart Association, limit your saturated fat and limit your added sugar. America didn't listen to any of that. They ate more of everything. They eat more chicken, eggs, and cheese, so there's more saturated fat. They ate way more sugar. The only thing we eat a little less of is red meat which is a very small downturn. Um, they listen to that. Uh, they haven't stopped eating bacon, however, which is probably the, the lowest rung of red meat. Um, nowadays, sugar is more an issue because we're overweight. 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. So now we're what's called insulin resistant. Yes. And you used to be able to eat some sugary food and your blood sugar didn't do that much. Now you're insulin resistant and your blood sugar goes to 300. Yes. If you weren't, 280 pounds, it wouldn't happen. If your waistline wasn't 42 inches, it wouldn't happen. So um, if the woman you presented to me goes on a no salt, oil, sugar added, whole food plant-based diet, she can eat fruit and it'll take a few weeks, but her insulin sensitivity will return. Okay. And, um, you know, a little bit of sugar in food, which is very hard to avoid, uh, will not cause the same problem it'll cause right now. Some people are clearly addicted to sugar and they need zero. You know, one Pop Tart is a tub of ice cream. Wow. And they're no different than an alcoholic with one drink or smoker with the first cigarette back. And if you know you're that way, just go zero. Exactly. Most of us don't need to go zero. Exactly. And don't ever fear fruit. Fruit's a fast food for health. What do you think of the ablation procedure? What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's great in the uterus. It stops uterine bleeding. Okay, I'm making it up. There isn't a <laughs> I'm not a gynecologist, but your listeners probably know about uterine ablation. Um, yes. And a lot of women seem to benefit from it. Um, an ablation procedure is to go up inside the heart and use energy and burn something, or in some cases, burn everything and try and get rid of a heart rhythm. There are some simple heart rhythms. There's one called SVT that an ablation cures. It's wonderful. It's amazing. It's a quick procedure. It's low risk. When you're talking fibrillation and flutter, it can be procedures that are hours long. They don't have 100% success rate. 
There are people that go back second time, third time. It's a lot of radiation exposure. I've seen people have wonderful results and horrible complications. Mm. There just was a large study comparing ablation for fibrillation versus medical management of fibrillation. And the real data was there was no benefit, although there was a quick spin on the story in the newspapers because it's a $5 billion industry. Of course. And the industry is not excited about the word getting out that people are gonna read uh, that it's of no benefit. A very prominent cardiologist, Dr. Packer from New York, did a full New York on it, saying you guys butchered the study because you're trying to protect your salaries and your Mercedes, the real data was it was of no benefit. So pretty interesting politics going on right now. And it's across the board, right? Dr. Joel, it's uh, the same politics as in, in yeah. every study that comes out. It's, it all depends on how it's interpreted and who's interpreting it and what data is, is being put out. Which well, is yeah, why there is not really informed consent. Mm -hmm. In my field, if you're having the most common problem, a clogged heart artery, informed consent is, if you'll adopt a whole food plant-based diet and you follow the program of Dr. Ornish and Dr. Esselstyn, you can probably avoid stents and bypass. Nobody gets told that. Uh, some people could be told, you know, if we increase your medication and adjusted your lifestyle and you went to cardiac rehabilitation, you might not need a stent. Hardly anybody gets told that. Stent, bypass, everybody gets told that. So yeah. most of my practice is second opinion where people's mouth fell open to hear the words that how come my doctor, my hospital, my whatever, never told me that I had an option and then I have to decide. Of exactly. course, they have to decide. Exactly. It's a pretty sorted affair and it's largely dollar signs. Yeah. Lack and of that's, education. That's why we are just so grateful to you, Dr. Joel, for doing these calls and, and getting the word out because we've got to get experts like yourself you know, on a bigger stage being heard. So someone can listen to this and go back to the doctor and say, wait a minute, you said stand, but I heard this interview where I heard I have an option. You know, what about this option? I mean, that's really what we're doing is we're trying to do a grassroots education. And so that a lot of friends around the country. You absolutely are. Uh, you absolutely are. You're going to get a lot of people flying in to see you. I can guarantee you that, including her. She's already got your book and and is uh, scheduling an appointment. So, so I know that, that that's coming for sure. Do you know of people that have reversed their AFib? Is that something that's doable? Yeah, occasionally. There's far more data about reversing blood pressure, blood sugar, and heart artery problems. Um, there's no actual scientific studies looking at atrial fibrillation. But if 260 pounds becomes 180, if sleep apnea goes away, if the blood pressure 170 becomes 125, uh, if the nutrition improves because there's more fiber, magnesium, potassium in the diet, it may happen. That's, well, that's can't, wonderful. Can't quote a research article because we haven't gotten to studying that entity yet. That's hope right there. And uh, with that said, please enjoy your lunch. Have a fabulous weekend. And we're we'll having a no sugar added apple cider from the state of Michigan. So, oh, delicious! Yeah, Enjoy. that's why Johnny Appleseed planted all those apples to grow cider. So, I'm honoring Johnny Appleseed right now. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right, Dr. Joel, thank you so much.